Well, Paula WBZ's Dr. Malik Marshall joins me now to answer your coronavirus questions. And we're going to start with a question from Bud, who writes, My wife and I are vaccinated and boosted, but are having an argument about going to a house party with 30-plus people. We know of one guest who refuses to be vaccinated. Should we go? Oh, Bud, <laughs> what to tell you? You know, I honestly, I don't think it's a great idea to be really? indoors in close proximity to anyone else who is not vaccinated without your masks on, especially if you're over 65 or you have underlying health conditions. I'm sorry, I might be making the argument between you and your wife worse, but you asked for my opinion. <laughs> Maybe they have that one guest who's unvaccinated stand outside. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> Douglas says, I'm vaccinated and boosted. I want to visit my grandkids. Should I do a rapid test before I see them? Are they effective in de detecting Omicron? So yeah, the rapid test should still be able to detect the Omicron variant and other variants. But if you're going to test before seeing your grandchildren, and that's probably a good idea, especially if your grandchildren aren't vaccinated, you'll want to test the morning of the day you see them. You might want to ask your family also to get tested because you may be at higher risk if you're of grandparent age. So I like that idea of, of testing before you're seeing people, especially if they're not vaccinated. And then you have a measure of security going into exactly. it. Exactly. Well, Bob writes, they are talking about tweaking the boosters for new variants like Omicron. I know they're safe, but I'm concerned with having to get more and more boosters and how it could affect my body. Good question. Yeah, so we're not exactly sure if an additional booster specifically targeting Armicron will be necessary at all. I mean, hopefully we'll have more information in the next few weeks. And there is still optimism that the boosters that we're receiving right now will last longer than the original vaccine series. But the hope is that eventually we will only need boosters every one to three years, similar to how we get an annual flu shot. I'm glad you're fully vaccinated and your booster. I think that's the best thing you can do for your body right now. Okay, our final question is for from Brittany who says, I received the J&J &J vaccine in April right before I was to get a Pfizer booster. Oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. Before <laughs> I was to get a Pfizer booster, I tested positive. So J&J, &J, Pfizer booster, tested positive. Would you recommend I still receive a booster once I'm fully recovered, especially if new ones will be available as new variants come up? Sorry, you know, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> so again, really bad timing, which is why I encourage people to go out and get their booster so that this doesn't happen where you yeah. test positive before you're actually able to get a booster. You, you, you probably experienced a bump in antibodies after having a breakthrough infection, but we don't know how long those antibodies last. The immunity from vaccines tends to be better than generated by natural infection alone. So you should still probably get a booster at some point, but you probably don't need to run out and get it right away. I would consider getting a booster within three months of your infection, unless you got monoclonal antibodies, in which case you actually need to wait 90 days or three months. A lot of good advice there, Dr. Malika. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Malika offers her best advice, but as always, consult your personal doctor before you make any decisions about your health. And if you have a question for Dr. Malika, there are three ways you can reach her. First, email drmalika at cbs.com. You can reach out to her on Twitter at Malika Marshall or send her a Facebook message, Dr. Malika Marshall.